still? Yeah. Or, no, 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 who's there? And for- <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's so wonderful. It's so wonderful to laugh and to be yeah. happy and to be healthy. Brains, welcome back to On the Edge with April Mahoney. Here, this is the place. Oh, yes, on the spot. Let me show you how to find it right here. <laughs> Where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Today, we have a beautiful Indian woman, Inthorani Arul, and she is going to talk to us about some very, very powerful spiritual awakening and cultural things that are going on. I say cultural norm. Some people say abnormal. We don't know what's going on, but we're about to find out. Thank you so much, and welcome to On the Edge. Thank you so much, uh, April. I'm so grateful to be here. You are just as pretty as you can be, and we both wore blue, okay? We're, f- we're feeling the feels today. Absolutely. <laughs> so, Erenthi, tell us a little bit about, number one, tell us about your name. I love that name. Thank you. Um, yeah, well, it's South Indian. Um, I'm of Tamil origin. So, um, yeah, my parents uh, gave me this, this name and uh, I know I've had many people <laughs> struggle with it, <laughs> but, it <laughs> but I'm very grateful for it. Well, good. Well, you know, all you have to do is educate them and take your time. Okay. It's three syllables. Iranti. Inthiranti. Inthiranti. Yes. <laughs> I don't want to give her a nickname. I'm going to figure it out. (laughs) Tell us a little bit about your journey. I mean, you are um, going to cover a lot. You know, you've been a healthcare provider for your, both of your parents. Uh, You are a single parent. You are a woman that was um, given up in honor in an arranged marriage. Um, I want to talk to you a little bit about that because people don't, we don't do that in America. Maybe we do sometimes, you know, because folks are quick to tell your kids, you better marry up. But to pick a mate, you know, and what that looks like, what that feels like, what's the texture, what is the cultural norms there in India, and why has that been a practice, and also what you're doing now. You're an author, successful author of three books. I want to talk a little bit about your books. So start at the beginning. And tell us your great, compelling story. Okay, awesome. Um, well, I had the... Pr- you know, I'm so very grateful to my parents. Uh, as a young girl, I, um, I lived in an environment where my mother lost her sight progressively. She suffered from mental health issues uh, and um, was living in, that, in, that, uh, in those conditions that I truly um, got to really understand life. And um, um, just to see, you know, to be able to, because my mother was a diabetic as well. And many times she'd take a literally throw it and she wouldn't eat and and if she didn't eat it would become a life-threatening medical emergency and um and i have i found her unconscious one time and uh and i didn't know what to do in that moment and it was the most terrifying experience i thought you know and every day i thought i was gonna lose her you know that she was gonna die because i didn't know whether i was gonna find her alive or dead because um, Know, because she was um, a diabetic, and and so I had it brought this alertness and this uh, and this level of you know really being conscious and being there to make sure that she was okay because I didn't want to lose her. I, I loved her so much, even right. though my mother is a diabetic. My mother is ninety years old, and let me tell you, she takes quite a co- a cocktail three times a day of medication. And I am starting to see that her eyesight is starting to be affected by diabetes. I want to just tap on into that just for one second because so many people in different cultures, and I'll use my black people, they say, oh, it's just a little sugar. Give me a little bit more insulin. I'll be all right. I can have that cookie. I can have that. You have no idea. My brother-in-law passed away. God bless his soul. Uh, They were going to amputate his penis from diabetes because the blood flow and it had started to, you know, it fingers here, foot here, leg here. It is very, very serious. And we need to keep that blood sugar under control, especially different cultures. You know, it runs rampant. So you were there to take care of her. She lost her eyesight. And you said she also had mental health challenges. I know that was a struggle as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Cause I mean, she was, you know, there were, she didn't recognize me many times. I, she didn't even know who I was. She was just like, 
<laughs> you know, um, and she would leave the house. I mean, she would just disappear. And, and mm -hmm. thankfully, a neighbor one time uh, told me that she was in, in, in their place taking a shower because um, she was trying to get her eyesight back. And it was it was terrifying to know that she she had left. And that's when I really became even more alert, you know, to make sure that she was safe. Right. And so you took care of your father as well. And, and uh, we send you love and light. You said he passed not too long ago. Tell us a little bit about that as well. Oh, yes. Um, yeah, my father, he, I mean, uh, he's been there, you know, after my husband passed um, in 2004. And he, he's always been there in my life. And it was the most difficult experience to see him, you know, lose his memory and lose you know be well not necessarily like his memory was still pretty good but his you know just to see him his health deteriorate so rapidly and it was just it was heartbreaking to watch um but I, um and i i mean i was just so grateful to of course having a uh, grigi in my life um the trivedi effect and 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 having you know, the divine and in God in my life to get me through this incredible, uh, you know, difficult, uh, you know, time. That right. Time. Yeah. And you also lost your husband at a very early age. Uh, and that was a bit of an arranged marriage. So tell us a little bit how, to, how those pieces were put together as far as, you know, your, your parents, I know they're very loving and they honored you. Uh, with regards to the the marriage, and then after you married, and then your husband passing away. Yes, um, yes. Yeah, so, yes, it was an arranged marriage, and I mean, I'm always very grateful for every experience I've had in my life. Right, right. It all brings. It gave me so much um, knowledge, and everything helped me grow to become who I am today. Um. How old were you when you got married? I was um, 22, 21, 21. 21. Yeah. So, you know, again, I'm speaking from a place of ignorance, and I'm curious. My brains want to know, too. So one night, you guys are having dinner. <laughs> you get a rock, knock on the door, and there's a nice, handsome man there, and your parents introduce you to him and say that, you know, this is going to be your future husband. How, how does that work? I, I don't even understand it. Well, yes. So it was an arranged marriage. Um, my my parents uh, did, you know, find um, my husband, and uh, uh, he. They always told me they wanted me to have an arranged marriage. This was okay. something that my father always was very strong about. Was and your his marriage to your mom was that an arranged marriage as well? Yes, this was also an arranged marriage. Okay. Yes, and. Um, uh yeah so it was it was you know i i mean i didn't know him mm -hmm. I, I didn't it was a, it was an experience of getting to know who he was right right and it was uh you know i mean even on the wedding day he did say he you know that he um he was um you know he regretted marrying me um you know cuz uh, it was uh, you know is he older than you or well, he was he, he was raised in malaysia i was raised here in canada oh, and okay. yes he was older than me 5 years older and um did, did your parents know his family uh no not did very they much. find him on craigslist <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding, yeah, Grace. Yeah, i'm well, just kidding yeah, it was yeah they didn't know the family but they knew through uh, you know, a little bit about them through uh, relatives. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's how I um, found him. And because um, we don't know a lot about that in, in, in the United States. And that's kind of why I'm, I'm kind of tossing around the questions is because we don't know, you know, sometimes there's a dowry, sometimes there is, a, you know, families that known each other, and they want to keep that, you know, that, that, sacredness um you know in the african culture a lot of young women are um, 
found to uh, found a suitor for them because of their virginity and that they're pure and they want to keep that. So there's a lot behind this brain. It's not just because, oh, okay, well, you know, that's a nice guy and I want my daughter to be him. It's very cultural. It's very spiritual. It's very well thought out by the parents and not something that's just, you know, you just toss you out because you're sloppy seconds. They want the best for their child. They want the best for their daughter. So your husband passed away mm -hmm. and you were a mother. And so now, um, how old is your son? Uh, he's now 17. He's 17. And how old was he when your husband passed? He was 18 months. Wow. Yes. How long were you married before you conceived? 14, 14 years. Wow. So, wow, I mean, that's a lot going on there. You're taking care of mama, daddy, an 18-month-old baby. Your husband just passed away. Where do you find yourself? Were you, you know, did, were you on automatic or were you emotionally in turmoil? Tell us where you were. Oh, well, you know, one of the things I, you know, I always, I was always a very loyal person. I always, that's always been part of my being. And I always, you know, always wanted to make sure everybody was, you know, taken care of and safe and, um, I always, um, I mean, yes, of course I had struggles. It was, you know, with my own communication, I struggled like, you know, uh, throughout the process, of course, um, we all go through, you know, through right. when we're facing adversity, uh, we all <laughs> go through ups and downs um, in our, you know, in, through our emotions and. What was your aha moment? What was your awakening? And you said, you know what? This is just not my recipe for success. I want to do something else. Um, well, I always knew that all these experiences, I came to this understanding, you know, um, after my husband passed, um, that there was this, like, this nagging feeling, you know? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Had to do something more, and you have to the, the, you got to help more people. Mm. The, all these experiences, this knowledge, this you know, this you know, so much to offer. And but I didn't know what it was right. and how it was going to come about. But I I knew that all this was building up for something greater for myself to step into. Right. <laughs> and, I, I didn't know how and what it was going to be like. And, um, and so it was all about just taking that action. You know, I just had to step in and just take a course. So I started reading materials, reading books yeah. um, and started taking courses and um, just, just doing. What type of courses did you take? Um, well, I, well, I've, I, I did graduate from Dale Carnegie in public speaking and human relations training, but that was before I got married. And, mm -hmm. and um, of course we all go through roller coasters in our lives, in our relationships and stuff like that. And that I, I, I lost my own self-esteem and mm -hmm. you know, struggled with my self-esteem for a large part of my life. Um, however, um, I did um, after he passed, I, I started taking, like I went, I joined peak potentials. I went to CEO space and I learned like so much from all these experiences and, so and people poured and, into you. And I met Shelly Hunt um, at, at the woman with the woman global change who, who mentored me um, with my books um, and uh, you know, and kind of guided me, gave me that, you know, cause we all need people to help us to, right. To, to connect to who we are and to through questions through experiences and you know through all of those wonderful things that you did you know you started a business I did. and so you know a very successful business and right in the same trajectory as to what you were doing you uh help people with medical disabilities tell us a little bit about your business model um so um yeah so I work with um, adults with special needs. I've worked with, I've, I've volunteered with the elderly. I've taken care of, um, you know, for over a period of five years. Um, and I, you know, I, so basically I work um, with, in it, right now I'm, well, I used to work in a um, high, very high medical needs group home for, um, you know, about 14 years. And uh, mm -hmm. it was, uh, 
you know, I learned so much from, from the people. Well, it's a very challenging environment that you're in, you know, and it, we're not just talking about the mental, you know, sometimes these people are ill and they're combative. Sometimes you have to physically restrain them or, you know, t turn them over, uh, make sure that they eat, uh, deal with their families, deal with their emotions. And you get emotionally invested in that. I mean, there's no way that you can't because you're a very loyal person. You're a very powerful person. So you took all of these experiences and you wrote not one, not two, but three books. You have one of them with us. Let's just see the cover. And I want to hear about what is in the pages of your book. Ooh, Self-Esteem Survival Guide. Yes. Yes. Wow. Now that's powerful. Now you can get that on Amazon, right? Um, well, it's, it's actually on my website. You can get it on my website. Um, uh, it, is, it is on Amazon, but the co a publishing company has shut down. So well, don't, don't worry about it. They can get it directly from you though, correct? Directly from me. Absolutely. We want to be sure to be able to get it. So tell us what's inside the pages of the book. Um, yes. Yeah, so, um, okay. So basically, um, I'll, I'll read you some of the chapters. So that you can... Okay. So we have um, anchored and standing in your authentic self. Um, and then remember who you are. Uh, lost in the forest. Mm. Um, darkness emerges through the trees. Um, is it me? Uh, when the waters rise, uh, riding the waves, uh, caught in the tide, the gift, because everything in life that we experience has a gift for us to learn from. Um, the aftermath from the storm and the rising waters understanding boundaries, uh, confident in looking back and moving forward. Uh, safety, this is your family and this is an important message. And there's tools and there's resources. Well, tools and resources. So let's talk a little bit about that. The tools and resources, you've done the, the, the heavy lifting, you've documented it in a book, but now you walk people on this journey with you. You help facilitate them. Tell us a little bit about your coaching and where you aspire to springboard to. Um, so I, I have a website. Um, it, I am one of the uh, Trevetti healers. I have, um, I have a website called inthrani.com. Um, wait, wait, wait. I, before we go further, I want people to understand what Trivedi is. So let's go back, explain what, what that is and that philosophy, and then we'll get to, to where you are because I don't want them to miss anything. Okay, absolutely. Um, so I was, you know, I've always wanted to, through, through my life, I've always, you know, my, my parents, my mother taught me about prayer when I was young. So I always had this connection to want to be closer to God and to divine and to be to live my life through those divine characters mm. I always wanted to improve myself and mm. that's why I took courses I took trainings and all these things and through that I was led to meet Guruji Mahendra Trivedi uh, who is the highest form of consciousness on the face of this planet today and because of, and I've, I've been with his, you know, with him since 2011. And through those, dis it, he's done discourses. And, and it's always about connecting us to who we are. Mm. And, in, and truly becoming that more pure, more, you know, that better conduit of this divine energy that we all have, um, that we all can harness. And, um, and it's through working on our own self-assessment and improving ourselves that we can truly become that greater conduit. And, and, and because of Guruji, and he's all about bringing outcome into the world. He has, he has been documented in over 4,000 peer reviewed science journals, like his, his, in being studied by universities bound, around the world. Um, you know, he's, his his abilities the world what is it what is the spiritual teaching is it like because I, i'm not familiar with it so is it um 
Is it energy center? I'm just trying to not put it in a box or frame it, but I'm just trying to get a better understanding for me and my brains. So is it spiritually based? Is it uh, energy work? Is it uh, written from ancient text? Is it a combination of all? Is it meditation? Is it a, uh, is he a form of guru? Explain. He, he, he has a gift. He came in, he's in this world with this gift. Mm. It's a, uh, and it and this gift it, he he blesses he uses um he has he's the ability to harness this energy and mm-hmm. which is from the creator is divine it's right. divine and i'm just the conduit uh, of this energy and he's, and he he's he he has that connection and um so he has the connection and and he is your your teacher and your facilitator and so you're able to channel this energy and and this thought process and these beliefs into other people to elevate them absolutely to bring them because I, I as i said it's i'm just the conduit of this energy and it's it just it's like having the um the satellite and the computer right you know, it's connecting the person to the god of their understanding this energy does and um and and to bring the greatest outcome in their lives. And so you're doing a lot of work with coaching with individuals and you're still raising a 17 year old son. What does he say about all of the things? I love to ask parents that what is your, your, your kid tapping into these days? I mean, you know, millennials are having a whole different conversation than we are, you know, mm-hmm. um, he's at the point of maybe he's, you know, dating and, you know, he's looking to find who he is innately. What kind of conversations do you have with him about life and kind of structuring his foundation? Um, well, he's, he's a very, um, he, he's also, he's a gifted child. Mm-hmm. He's somebody who's, um, uh, who um, I just, I learned at a very young age that he, he, um, that he, he, performed above the norm in speech perception. When he was born, they, they discovered that through research uh, at the hospital when he was born. I was uh, so privileged to um, allow my son to be a part of that. And um, at 10 months old, he was recognizing words. And um, and today he's, I mean, I, I, I've, I've, I've always put him into, into um, you know, gi- to g- given him opportunities where he he was able to discover for himself and and put him into a school uh, that nurtured him mm-hmm. uh, to you know t- to challenge him because right. of his abilities. Have you always sought out mentors for him? You know, he he yeah. lost his father at, at you know at eighteen eighteen months, so there was really kind of and you know your your dad was I don't know how how well he was at that time, but there was really no implant of a male role model. And it's hard for a woman to try to raise a man, okay? It's, it's very different. And again, with cultural dignity and respect, because that's who we are, you know? We, we teach our children who we are and be proud of who they are. Um, it is a large Indian community in Canada are a lot of uh is there a lot of support groups within the community as far as you know keeping the culture you know because canada's a long way from india you know keeping the culture there being supportive understanding their tradition is there a lot of activity there in canada oh absolutely there are support groups however i've been raised in this culture I, since i was three years old okay. so um and uh, so i've um I've had a, a really great support system for him. Um, I've been very blessed. Uh, I always sought um, male instructors um, or you know teachers, um, and and thank thankfully I had my father. Um, right. He was a great role model for my son, and he he spent a lot of his time. He learned to care for my father too, and it was such a gift, you know, for him to be nurtured in that environment as well. And you, you are a wonderful woman and you have been through a lot of life and a lot of loss. Give my brains some words of encouragement 
uh, and motivation, you know, because there's somebody out there right now that is in a strange place. Uh, they may have be may be a caregiver for a family member, or they may have mental health challenges, or they may be a widow, or they may be a single parent. What could you tell them right now that would encourage them? Absolutely. Um, just know that you are not alone. Um, and you know, we are all a part of creation. We all of, all of us are, we're brought here through the creator. And we all, every person comes into our lives to play a role in our life. And we play a role in their life. And, and always just keep yourself, you know, always take care of yourself and know that you are, you know, within us is divine. We are a divine creation. And, and there's love that exists within us. And it's to always try to find that connection back to who we are, our true self, our authentic self. And, and to know that life has a purpose far greater than you may even be aware of. Well, and, preach, yeah. honey. Because, again, I'm looking for it. And people are looking for it. And this is the time of year. This is the, it's the time of year where things have kind of mellowed out. And people are looking in self-reflection. They're looking in the mirror. And sometimes they're looking in the mirror and they don't even recognize who they see. Mm -hmm. But you recognize who you are in Therani Aru. And I think that you're beautiful and you've been through a lot and you have done the heavy lifting. So you're able to help carry people through the threshold. Brain, so we are the divine. We are the energy. We are the spirit. And we need to awaken that. We need to tap into it. Great people like um, Indrani is here for you in Canada. She's online. Please tell my brains how to get in contact with you to purchase a book. Uh, to, you know, if they want to, or they need, you know, help facilitating uh, some care for someone that's disabled, how do we reach out to you? Absolutely. Uh, you can reach me at intherani.com. Um, and that's my website, or, or you can come through to me through soulpathinc.com. Um, and um, yeah, so you can do all my contact information is there. Well, I'm gonna put it down at the bottom because she has a very unique spelling. And so we want you to not miss a beat. I'm gonna put that there. I'm gonna put the links to her website. Uh, and anything that we can do to support you, to encourage you, to get the word out, please come back to the edge because we're here for you, okay? Thank you. Thank you, I honor you. I do, I do. Brains, I need you to go and subscribe. Not only just listen. Okay, we want to build those numbers. We want to just take this viral because this is an important message. Everything that we do here on the edge is crafted specifically for you. It's not about me because I could talk to these people offline, but to get them to them to invest their time, their energy, to share with you their books, their wisdom, all of that is very, very important. And we love you and we care about you and we want you just to be stellar. <laughs> so continue doing what you're doing. Thank you so much, Itaran. In Therani? In Therani. In Therani. Our rule. Thank you so much for being here on the edge and come back again, okay? Thank you so much. Bye, brains.